So guys, this is the Maze Alpha, and it is a supremely, massively interesting phone, primarily because nobody's heard of the company. So this company just appeared on social media, started teasing this incredible device, and later down the line announced it would cost less than $200. So you can imagine we're pretty excited about it. And without any further ado, let's unbox it and then see how it stacks up. So, the box. Um, first impressions, extremely heavy. And in terms of the finish, it's fairly nice. I mean, it's not the best I've seen. We've seen textured finishes, we've seen matte finishes. I like the lettering on the front. And the back tells us all the specifications. And this is a six inch bezel-less display, bear in mind, which is completely amazing. The internal packaging for some reason is a little bit nicer than the external. And then we have the smartphone itself. So we'll take a look at that in a second. And dude, that is, that is a really, really heavy phone. Okay. I'm kind of concerned, that was really heavy. Okay, we'll get onto that in just a moment. Let's take a look at what we've got inside the box. So first up we have a, this is a sort of little package, got a nice matte finish. You can see we've got the SIM ejector tool, which is a pretty standard one on this device, nothing too fancy going on there. And inside we have two tempered glass screen protectors. I'm speechless. A company has finally answered my call. I've been going on and on about including these in the packages of smartphones rather than those super naff plastic ones a lot of them do. This makes so much sense. So we have a couple of instruction manuals. Again, nothing too fancy, but nonetheless feeling quite complete. So we've got a mains adapter, which is again, rather chunky. And we have a USB type C cable over here. And okay, there's nothing else in the package, which means the weight is probably stemming primarily from the smartphone. So yeah, this is a very heavy phone. It weighs over 200 grams and you can really tell. And to be honest, when I first saw the design, it's eye catching, it's nice. But the first thing that sprung to mind was this smartphone over here. This is the Duji Mix. It's priced competitively with this smartphone and you can clearly tell they are both borrowing their ideas from exactly the same bank. So they also, in terms of the front, have exactly the same layout. They've both got the fingerprint scanners on the front of the phones, not the back like we've seen with other bezel-less devices. They both also have completely identically placed front cameras, which is very cute. And all in all, this basically looks like a slightly larger version of this, but internally is where the differences start to occur. So let's get right onto that. So I've been using the phone for a few days now, and these are the most important things you need to know about it. To start with, about the weight. Yes, this is a very, very heavy smartphone, but at the same time, the fact that that weight is distributed fairly evenly across a large surface area means you don't feel it as much. It is a fairly comfortable phone to hold, but its sheer heft means that you are restricted to using it exclusively with two hands. Now the corner is slightly sharper than we've seen on other phones with a similar design, which you notice to begin with, but after a bit you get over it. Unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan of the finish on the phone. It is incredibly glossy, which looks great when it's clean, but trust me, after 10 minutes of using it, it will not look clean. Now the camera on the Maze Alpha is very interesting. It combines a dual camera setup here, but one of them is a five megapixel sensor and the other one is a 13. And to be honest, for the most part, the results are astonishing. Considering the price of the handset, the photos it produces are very detailed. They have a great amount of bokeh, the shutter time is fast, colors are vibrant, and it even works well in low lighting conditions. Now, what I found that was interesting was that, as with all dual camera smartphones, this does have a special bokeh mode. And it's got the ability to produce stunning quality photos, even if the shutter time is a bit slower by this method. However, the way the phone goes about doing bokeh is completely off. You have a small circle in the center which is essentially in focus and everything else is out of focus. So whilst this has the potential to look good when framed correctly, for the most part it looks super weird. Now the front camera is surprisingly good, I really like the quality and the light in the shots. But unfortunately its position means that half the time you'll be taking photos like this to begin with. So the front of the phone is dominated by a 6 inch 1080p IPS display. And it's very bright, completely viewable in outdoor conditions. The contrast isn't quite where a Super AMOLED panel might be, but the colors are extremely vibrant, and for the most part, this makes almost any media look good. And in almost all cases, whether it's gaming, browsing, or watching videos, I never found its resolution limiting. The only thing worth noting is that it does have a slight over-sharpening effect, which makes things look a little bit more artificial on the display. Also, the screen is covered by Gorilla Glass 4, which is good, but not great. Running a knife lightly along the screen still managed to cause quite a severe scratch, which wouldn't have occurred with Gorilla Glass 5. Now, whilst the phone does have a battery capacity of 4,000 mAh, which is considered very high, its end battery life is more like just above average. You'll get about a day and a half of normal usage, which is fair enough, 
but it does feel like all that bulk we've had to add to the phone to get this huge battery in there should have resulted in a bit more. So the standard model of the phone, which we have right in front of you, has 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and the Helio P25 chipset. And whilst in mid-2017 that is considered a fairly mid-range spec, when you're using it, it feels anything but. The phone feels very slick, very fast, and unusually responsive given the components inside. The fingerprint scanner seems to have benefited from this as well, being one of the more responsive ones I've tried on a phone this price, and it also doubles as a back key, which is very handy. In terms of benchmarks, we get more or less what we expect. We got 61,000 on Antutu, which really is a halfway house. Having said that, in terms of real life usage and what that number really means for performance, it means you can essentially play any game you want to. The chip does have a couple of compatibility issues, but just about any demanding game you want to play, this will run fine. It's a bit of a shame about the speakers, they're not particularly loud, and they also don't have very good instrumental separation at all. But to be honest guys, the Maze Alpha as a smartphone and a prospect in general has been one of the biggest surprises to land with me. It's a bit of an all-round powerhouse, sporting an impressive display, fantastic camera, and a responsive level of performance. It's backed up by great battery life, tons of storage, as well as European 4G LTE connectivity. Unfortunately, none for US. The Alpha does have a few shortcomings, but it's by far the most impressive, budget, bezel smartphone we've ever seen. Thanks a lot for watching, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.